As we get closer to finishing up Mike's S15 here, we are buttoning up the bodywork for the last time before it goes to paint. The shame. The shame. So, uh, one of the things we're doing, obviously fitting it all up, making the side skirts fit with the, you know, all this stuff's different brands. You got to make it all fit together, and it's all fiberglass. Doesn't fit very well, in my opinion, to begin with. Uh, we also add some vent holes. These here are for the radiator, uh, just to get let the hot air escape. So we put some kind of funny designed vent holes here, and then we also put some here between the tail lights, just to get the hot air out. Uh, drift cars do a lot of idling, just sitting still idling. So you want the heat to kind of radiate up and out as well. So that's uh, half the reason for these. But they'll also let push the air out of the radiator and up as well. Uh, what I'm going to do next here is put a few more of those like vent holes into the hood here right above the turbo. Uh, I'm going to put them right in here somewhere. And we will probably do a similar design like that pill shape that I always do. So we'll get that set up, tape a pattern on there, and cut some holes. We also got some of the wiring harnesses from Outbreak Auto Sports. This is the engine harness, which we're going to be putting in shortly here. And they sent it to us without the boots on it, without like the ceiling boots. That way we can orient it whichever way it needs to be in the firewall before we seal the boot on which kind of dictates the direction the harness comes off the connector. Shane has already started installing some of this rear power harness. So it's got a bulkhead connector here. I'm just going to go into this piece of the rear firewall there like that. And this is basically power for our fuel pumps radiator fans and tail lights and really not much else back here but there are some spare inputs and outputs if we do want to add anything back here which is nice so kind of a mess here but um, it'll come together So after I drew out my pattern, I just use a broder brooch on each end of the pill shape, and then I connect it with a jigsaw. And that's it. Peel the tape off, sand in your edges a little bit, and you got some vents. We are also plumbing some extra sensors in here as we button up. We're also plumbing in some extra sensors here as we button the car up. This one's going to be used for crankcase pressure uh, because it's dry sump. Especially we want to monitor crankcase pressure. Um, this one I'm just going to mount with an Adele clamp up here on the firewall. And then I'm going to pull the pressure right out of the crankcase, so like right out of the valve cover here. So I'm going to modify a fitting to accept a uh, smaller AN hose and I'll run a hose up here to it. This is my Dash 12 O-ring plug and instead of using, like, using an internal hex plug I opted for like the big external hex style so that I can drill and tap the center of it. Because what I'm going to do is thread this in there and that'll be the source for my crankcase pressure. So I'm just going to put this in the lathe, drill it and tap it and then I'll be able to thread this in there. Nice and easy. So having a lathe is pretty cool because it makes doing stuff like that super easy. Now we're drilled for 8th MPT. We thread our fitting right in there and we got our reference port. There's my fitting installed and I made this little hose. It's like a dash 4 hose with some heat sleeve because it's right by the downpipe here. Plumb to our pressure sensor. And it's a little chaotic under here as we are routing all of our wiring, uh, mounting sensors where they need to go, anything that hasn't already been plumbed. 
and uh, right now Shane is priming the oil system which is pretty cool it's easy to do with a dry sump you can just put a ratchet on your oil pump there without a belt on it spin it and you're pumping oil so we are just backfilling it we already did backfill it actually and now we're gonna run oil out of the return hose here just to make sure that it's flowing all the way through the system before we plug it all back in. Go ahead. Alright. Yeah, that's oil. We're juicing. And that is where we stopped keeping track of the build process on video. Things got really hectic. We had Chad from Outbreak Auto Sport come up and he helped us finish wiring the car using all the harnesses that he pre-made. Uh, we had Cleo come down. He helped us tune it. Uh, Sander from Obsidian Motorsport helped us configure all the Mtron, the Motec stuff. And uh, yeah, Shane and I really busted our asses getting the car together um, to testing, which didn't work out so well actually. Our shakedown day didn't go so great. Uh, and then the car went straight to FD, where Mike drove it for the first time. So that's all I've got for you as far as the build process on this car. I am going to do some more videos in the future about the car. I'm going to do like a giant breakdown, which is going to show you basically like every aspect of it. Um, like build videos like I've done in the past for other projects here. And then, um, you know, look forward to other videos from us on other projects as well. And um, probably going to do other videos with Mike's car too. Maintenance, um, things that we might upgrade if any, stuff like that. So definitely stay tuned. Thanks for watching.